Hi everyone, I'm Jessica. Welcome back. Today we're working on block 33 of the 2023 Scrappy Sampler. This block's going to be a fun one. I've had requests for this block before, so I'm happy that we're making it today. It is a Hunter's Star block. We're using templates. You'll need to download those from my blog. So let's get started. The Hunter's Star block gets a bad rap for being tricky, but it's actually not that difficult. You do need to cut out templates, so maybe people struggle um, with that, but if you take your time and cut the templates out exactly as they are, these blocks are a breeze to put together. So this is the unit that we need to make. This is the main component of this block. We make this same unit eight times for this block. We're gonna put two of them together to make a square, and then we make four squares and put that together to make it into a big block. So this is gonna be easy, do not worry. So if you cut the templates exactly as they are with the little notches at the end, I would take the time to do that because it makes putting this together a lot easier. So when you have your colored piece, this is an A template, and then this is a C template. Let me show you exactly how to line this up so you get it perfect every time. This point right here, I like to point at this with my scissors so you can see better. So this point right here is going to match up right here with this point. So I'm going to do that first. And once you have those two points matched up, you're going to see that the top of the block right here, this little portion that we cut flat is going to lay right perfect with that. That's the first step. So we have that laid perfectly. Now we're going to sew with a quarter of an inch here down this edge. Make sure that your quarter of an inch here is exact because it will matter. It does matter in all your quilting blocks and especially for a block with a template like this. The best results are when you can sew that accurately. And now you can see, I'm just gonna finger press this open, that that shape continues right on from this center shape. Now the next step is to take another, it's exactly an A template, but put on the other side in a different color. So I'm just going to turn it around so you can see it. And we're going to do exactly what we did before, it's just upside down. So we're taking this point of the shape right here, and we're matching it with this point right here. And if you do that correctly, the whole side lines up, and then this flat part matches up with this flat part of the block. So once you have them all set, all the sides matched up correctly, you can go ahead and sew there, let's see, with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then you're going to have this long piece. And this is looking perfect so far. The next step is to add a triangle to the top. So what I like to do here is I flip it over and then I'm taking this and I'm folding it in half. I'm only matching up, you know, piece the sides of piece C. I'm not worried about these two at all. If piece C is matched, then it's correct. And really what I'm matching is this top part. So when this is all matched perfectly, I'm gonna finger crease this right here. And then I also have the big triangle. These are not cut by template, these are cut by size. Um, I'm gonna fold this in half so that the sides are all perfectly matched up and I'm gonna finger crease right there at the middle. And just give these finger creases a little bit of hold so that they show up. So now you can see that one there and you're gonna be able to see this one there too. So then what you're going to do is match the two finger creases up just like this. So you start by matching the creases. And I'm letting the purple A template, letting it lay nice and flat. And then we're gonna sew on this long diagonal. You are going to have white from the triangle sticking out about a quarter of an inch past. And that is perfect, you should have that. I'm gonna sew right to this middle point, And then I'm gonna stop for a second because I have my green piece folded down go right to the middle and then I'm gonna make sure this is laying and again just like we had on the purple side you have this little quarter of an inch piece hanging up that is exactly right you want that there and we sew to the end and here's what we have so if you piece that correctly then when you fold this triangle up 
the little overhangs should be, everything should be right in line. So you can see here, this is all in line. And when I cut this overhang away, I have a really nice flat block edge here. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. And now you can see I have half of my triangle made. It looks really nice. And that wasn't bad at all. I mean, definitely not as difficult as some of the blocks that we've tackled in this quilt along together, by no means. So we need eight of these for this block. So I'll make those and then I will come back here to show you how to put them together. So now I have two of these units here and what we need to do is sew them together on this long diagonal and then they're gonna make a square. So this is pretty simple too, so don't, don't worry. What you're gonna do is match the notched edges here and if everything is pieced correctly, you'll be able then to match the notch edges on the other side too. And that's it, that's all you have to do to sew these together. So you start by matching these notched edges and when you do that, these seams here are going to match. So let's just drop a needle here and start sewing. Okay, and when you match those, what's gonna happen is it's gonna guide you to match the rest of the block. And everything else is just going to line up really nicely. And you're just going to keep sewing down this long diagonal here. And then these two notched edges at the end, they're already going to be matching because your piece matched up so nice. And because they're notched, you're not going to have to trim any overhang. And this is our piece. That's not too bad, right? Okay, so we needed to make eight triangles which turns into four blocks. I have all four of the blocks made. Now let's work on assembling the large block. So if you wanted to press here you can and if you want to wait and just finger press you can do that as well. So we're just taking two of the blocks and you can see already we have this pretty star forming in the middle and then if we had a whole quilt of this there would be stars forming here too. In our block we're not because we don't have a whole quilt of it. So we're just going to line these up on top of here lining the two edges of this uh, square up together making sure we're using a good quarter of an inch seam allowance here and sew these together. And then these seams, it depends to you how you want to nest them. If you want to nest each one, you surely can. So just work on that as you're putting the blocks and make sure you're pushing them like in the correct direction to nest. Okay, that's that one. We just need the other two. And now we're just going to sew these two other squares onto it. So I am going to put these seams in like this and I'm just gonna lift my presser foot and get that under there and start sewing this. And I am turning this one seam to nest here. So when I press, I'll pay careful attention to the way that I'm laying these. And we're just gonna sew this here all the way down. And the last thing we have to do here is this long seam. So I'll open these up and you can see how pretty this is gonna be. And fold one side on top of the other. And then just as we did before, you can nest any of the seams that you want to nest. So just start uh, laying them in the proper direction with your hands and then you can go ahead and get sewing them. When I come to the middle, I'm just gonna pause and just check the way I have these laid to make sure they're all laying nicely. And then we'll continue to sew across the middle here. That's gonna nest nicely. And then I'm gonna nest this one here too. So I'm matching my corners up and then I'm just laying these seams sideways, one one way and one the other so that they nest. Here we go. Let's work on pressing it. And here's our block, and we just need to press it. So I'm gonna flip it over and work from the back. And I'm gonna work in one corner at a time. 
just making sure the seams, I'm pressing them in a way that the same way that I sewed them. So um, these two look good. And then this one, it wants to lay this way, but I actually sewed it the other way. So I will take that and just turn that seam with my fingers like this and bring the iron right over the top and then get it to set in place there. And I'm gonna do this in every single corner of the block. I'm on the last corner here and I'm just, I pressed the center, not the big long seam, but the two small seams, I pressed them in the direction they should go. So we're having a really good start so far. I'm gonna fold the block in half and I'm just gonna make sure that everything is laying nicely. The seams that are nesting, I'm gonna make sure they, they still are and that everything is laying nice and flat. And I'll fuss with that with my fingers for a little bit until it's just right. And then I'm gonna set the iron on the long seam here. And then I will gently open it up and with the iron very carefully, just get that seam pressed here. And when we made the Le Moine star, I kind of did the same thing here. I'm gonna do it again. I'm not gonna go directly on this center. This center is pretty thick. Now, if you wanted to look up, there is a way. It's not difficult at all. I just don't usually do it. Um, that you can take these fabrics and spin them so that it will lay flatter. You can research that, like how to make the center of a Le Moine star lay flat. That's probably the best thing to search. And you'll see that method. You can absolutely do that. Um, I don't usually, like I said, I might in the future, but for these blocks, I haven't. And uh, so I just kind of go around the center and not on it. And then this block is looking so good. Look, we're all finished. I hope you had fun making this because it is a beautiful, beautiful block. And I hope that I have a whole cult of these in my future. So here's block 33. I hope you love making this. This is probably one of my favorite blocks. And I really hope that you enjoyed it too. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And if not, I will see you back here tomorrow for block 34. Thank you for following along.